This is Hayden Hiller-Smith, the genius editor behind Logan Paul's success. He's been active on YouTube for decades, and he's now saying that the platform is changing. Experts like Colin and Samir seem to agree, but I had to check for myself. So I did what any nerd would do. I analyzed 8,265 videos to find out. According to Hayden, the history of YouTube goes something like this. In the beginning, YouTube was filled with happy little teenagers who were running around, uploading videos just for the fun of it. Then the daily vlogging era started, with Casey Neistat being the biggest creator on the platform. These were the days of frequent uploads and sharing your personal life online. Then Mr. Beast happened. Mr. Beast started what Hayden calls the spectacle era, an era defined by videos that take a lot of time and money to produce. These videos are not meant to be personal. They're highly optimized to reach the widest possible audience and keep the viewers watching. Hayden is saying that this era is now coming to an end. YouTubers are now going back to creating more personal videos that are perhaps not as optimized for the YouTube algorithm. I'll be honest, this theory does make me feel all warm and fuzzy inside, but it's not exactly new. There are tons of YouTube videos out there that predict the end of Mr. Beast era and the start of something new. Most of these videos focus less on explaining why that change is happening and more on telling us how tired they are of Mr. Beast clones posting soulless content. One creator that did provide a theory as to why the platform is changing is Sissy Shia. She points to the global pandemic of 2020 as the root cause of the change. During the pandemic, people were staying at home for long periods of time, and that led to a new type of creators on the platform. Creators that are perhaps a bit older and have already done something with their lives they can talk about. CC is talking from personal experience. She quit her job as a lawyer in a big firm to pursue content creation. Naturally, you won't find a recreation of the Squid Game on CC's channel. This explanation is especially compelling to me since I've seen the exact same thing happen to my wife. She used to work as a tour guide, then COVID happened, now she has a YouTube channel with 1.5 million subscribers. I have 500 subscribers, but it's fine. I'm, I'm cool with it. Please like and subscribe. Okay, so we know for sure that there are at least some new YouTubers who make non-spectacle content, but are they part of a larger trend? Is it really the next era of YouTube, as so many people say? Let's start off by quickly defining what exactly is it we're trying to find? What do we actually mean when we're talking about things like trends or eras? It seems to me that what we're looking for is a pattern that is A, shared across many channels, and B, get a significant amount of views. Sure, trends are often led by one big creator, like daily vlogging was led by Casey Neistat. But if no one is following, it's hardly a trend, is it? In the same way, we wouldn't be talking about a trend that is happening across many channels that no one watches. When we say YouTube is changing, surely we mean the part of YouTube that is actually being watched. So what we want to do is look at a sample of popular videos, count the number of channels that behave like Mr. Beast, and see if that number changes over time. We can use the publicly available dataset of all videos that made it to the trending page in recent years. Let's take the last two years. 2021 and 2022 and see if we can notice any changes. Our dataset contains videos from 8,265 different channels. Hold it. Run that back. Many of these channels are not what we would call YouTubers. The data is filled with music videos, movie trailers, and news clips. But that's not what we have in mind when we're talking about YouTubers, so I want to filter them out. That leaves us with about 40% of their original channels. We want to compare the Mr. Beastiness of channels that were trending in 2021 to channels who were trending in 2022. But how do you measure Mr. Beastiness? What does it even mean? I'm going to break it down into four different attributes. Number one, title pattern. Mr. Beast videos are always about some larger than life spectacle. Looking at Mr. Beast channels, we can see that the titles of these videos are usually brief summaries of these spectacles. So I use the conveniently named YouTube search Python library to get all of Mr. Beast titles in the past three years. I then use the Spacey library to identify the grammatical structure of each title. I was looking for titles that start with a pronoun and continue with a verb. 
Titles like I gave my credit card to random people or I got hunted by the FBI. It turns out 81% of Mr. Beast titles either follow the pronoun verb formula or contain a dollar sign in them. These two rules accurately describe 8.7% of trending videos in 2021 and 8.3% of trending videos in 2022. The decrease in 2022 does conform with the theory, but I think we can all agree a 5% change is nothing to write home about. Number Number two, fast-paced editing. Mr. Beast is known for his incredibly fast-paced videos. His intros especially are filled with tons of cuts that are meant to keep the viewer engaged. If trending videos in 2022 have fewer cuts than those in 2021, that will support the theory that the era of Mr. Beast might be coming to an end. So I used PyTube to download all of Mr. Beast videos in the past three years, and then used PySyn Detect to count the number of cuts in the first minute of each video. I can now say that the average Mr. Beast video has 38 cuts in the first minute. Now let's do the same thing for all the trending videos in 2021 and 2022. Okay, analyzing thousands of videos might take a while because that's a lot of cuts. This feels like the right time to mention that if you spent hours cutting your YouTube videos, you should check out this tool I built called Bling. It uses AI to automatically count out all the bad takes, so you have more time to watch my videos. Okay, the data is here. In 2021, the average number of cuts was 19.2, when in 2022, the number was 19.8. So we can definitely see the trending videos aren't getting any slower in pace. Number three, thumbnail design. Mr. Beast is known to obsess over thumbnails, and he always uses the same pattern. So first, I try to be really fancy and use AI to grade the thumbnails of each year into clusters, and then measure the size of the cluster that looks the most like Mr. Beast. At first, it seemed like it might work, but then I realized just how much time it would take to make it actually work. And then a voice in my head said, Stop it! Get some help. Then I remembered people always say that Mr. Beast uses highly saturated colors in his thumbnails. So I used the OpenCV package to get the saturation level of all of Mr. Beast thumbnails from the last three years. The median Mr. Beast thumbnail has a saturation level of 102.3. In 2021, the median saturation level was 81.5, while in 2022, that number was 85.4. Again, this is actually the opposite of what the end of an era theory would have predicted. Number four, loud, loud voices. voices. Mr. Beast is known to use a lot of sound effects to just generally be very loud. The idea is that if you're bombarded with noise, you won't be able to focus on anything else but the video. To check the audio level of the video, I used PyDub, which is a tool that lets you do stuff to audio in a way that isn't stupid. That's an actual quote. So if the trending videos of 20 21 are louder than 2022, that would support the theory that the style of Mr. Beast is becoming less common. To give you some context, the loudness of this video In this video, we are going to sneak into Mr. Beast's warehouse is minus 12, and the loudness of this video Please make yourself comfortable is minus 24. Yes, loudness is measured in negative numbers. Get over it. I found that Mr. Beast's average loudness is minus 17.2. In 2021, the average trending video had a loudness level of minus 20.6, while in 2022, the average loudness level was exactly the same. Okay, what is going on here? We looked at four different metrics and none of them changed by more than 5%. Where is the new YouTube era we were promised? Where is the the Mr. Beast Justification of YouTube. Here's my hot take. The Mr. Beast era is not coming to an end because, in fact, it doesn't even exist. <laughs> I spent all this time comparing 2021 to 2022 only to find that no significant change happened. But when you look at both years and compare them to Mr. Beast's videos, it's easy to see that the average trending video is not a Mr. Beast lookalike at all. You see, the Mr. Beast era of YouTube never actually existed because YouTube is so much bigger than Mr. Beast. Sure, Mr. Beast gets a billion views per month and that's mind-blowing but it's also just 0.6% of the total views on YouTube. Cocomelon actually gets 2 billion views per month. Are we in the Cocomelon era? Should we all include a dancing baby in our next video? You know what, I'm going to put one here just to be safe. YouTube is a vast universe filled with every imaginable piece of content. It is the second most visited website on the entire internet. 
it is so vast that even the biggest channels represent only a tiny fraction of what's actually being watched on the platform. Yes, there are trends that come and go. Genres like reaction videos or study with me fluctuate in popularity. And obviously, that's true for spectacle videos as well. But YouTube is so big that these trends are barely noticeable when you look at the big picture. Saying that they define YouTube eras make no sense. This may sound like a potato-potato kind of situation, but it's actually really important. All this focus on Mr. Beast as an era-defining creator is exactly what drives talented creators not make the content they really want to make because they believe the only way to get views is to behave like Mr. Beast. Well, you've seen the data, and that is baloney.